tea stud. I don't know if I'm responding to tea studs. Dude should learn about tea studs. <laughs> Wasting money to achieve nothing. <laughs> no mention of a vaporware. I mean, that guy is ridiculous. Um, I like this guy down here. Real pros do this and have been for years. <laughs> That's so good. So we posted a video uh, regarding our exterior above grade wall assembly here, uh, which is that double studded wall, the two two by fours of the three inch gap. Uh, we had a ton of comments, a ton of views on it, and uh, we're very excited about all the action that this video has created. Um, there was a lot of comments uh, and questions, so we're gonna get to those here today. We got quite a few comments regarding a fire stop within the wall with our balloon framing. The, the insulation isn't complete all the way up to the roof deck. Our second floor sheathing does come across and it ties into the exterior wall assembly. So there isn't a clear shot all the way up to the top. You, can, you do have that exterior sheathing there that would uh, prevent a fire from uh, just jetting all the way up to the top. Another comment that we got, which was a very fair comment, one that I had, about dense pack cellulose was, you know, is this going to settle over time? And if it settles, you know, you're going to have a gap in your wall assembly and that gap is going to be basically have no insulation in it. So our dense pack cellulose has a starch within the, the dense pack. So when they put it on the wall, when they blow it into the wall, they blow it into a certain density and then they roll the wall that activates this starch that will kind of uh, almost make it uh, solidify within the wall and it doesn't allow it to settle. Uh, obviously when it comes to doing dense pack insulation there's a lot of uh, experience that comes with blowing that dense pack in making sure you got the proper density because if you don't have the proper density and things can settle and then you will have an issue so there is a lot of experience that's needed with your installer when putting that dense pack cellulose into the wall assembly. One other comment that we had about our dense pack cellulose choice for our wall assembly was rodents and pests getting in there. Now the dense pack cellulose has chemicals within it that help uh, resist uh, rodents and pets from wanting to be in there. As well, it's got a lot of fire resistance uh, with those chemicals as well. Okay, what's our next one here? So let's insulate. Exterior insulation. Yeah. Oh, guys. Okay. Now, when we first started out here at Homes by Sorensen, figuring out what wall assembly we wanted to go to, uh, it took a lot of research, a lot of time uh, for us to go through all the different ones that were out there. And we landed on the double studded wall assembly for a reason. It is by far the most cost effective wall assembly uh, and its construction ability, constructability is extremely high. Uh, there's tons of different other options to, to go to. Um, we had a lot of comments about doing exterior insulation rather than doing the double studded wall because the thing the double studded wall gives us is that complete thermal break. So a lot of our comments were directed towards, well, what if you did the insulation on the exterior of the wall? Uh, and yes, fair comment. You know, it's very easy to get a complete thermal break by putting exterior insulation outside of your exterior sheathing. Now, the problem with this is, is that the framers come out and they frame your house up. Uh, and after the framing's up, uh, then you're gonna be relying on the siders to come out and be working off scaffolding to be put in on exterior insulation. Installing the dense pack cellulose or fiberglass bats within the house is far less laborious than going outside onto scaffolding and installing exterior insulation. Uh, not only is it more laborious, but also the products are more costly as well. We did get another question regarding uh, windows. Uh, so yeah, obviously with a high performance house, it is looked at as a system. The house is looked at as a system as itself. You can't just do one assembly and not do the other assembly. You want to do, you want to look at everything uh, as a whole. So that's your air tightness, your your basement slab, your uh, foundation wall, above grade wall, roof assembly, windows, air tightening, everything all together, you wanna to look at it. So obviously in this house here, we talked about our exterior wall assembly. Um, 
uh, but also our windows and doors here, we did not skimp out on those either. We have a really quality, high performance window here, triple pane, two coatings of low E. So yes, although we have a great wall assembly, we also have great windows and doors here. So yes, I, I completely agree with that user. You do need to also do a great job of uh, choosing a quality window for your high performance home. So obviously a big part of wall assemblies is cost effectiveness. And you know, it's easy to build a high performance wall assembly, but we need to make sure it is cost effective. And we got a lot of comments from our viewers regarding this exact subject. So uh, yes, our material cost is marginally just a bit more because our studs are costing 60% of what a two by six stud is. And a two by six wall is what code minimum is. And I think a lot of our viewers might be from the States where Two by four might be that code minimum. Up here in Canada, uh, two by six is that code minimum. So that's where we are starting from. And then we are moving to that double studded wall, two two by four walls. So we've got twice as many studs at 60% of the cost here. Now, the other part of this equation is the labor to install that second wall. So our exterior wall is our most expensive wall. It has studs and it has sheathing. You have to have at least one of those. We are just installing uh, basically a basement frost wall uh, around the perimeter of this house with another two by four wall. So the labor to install a wall without sheathing on it is significantly cheaper than installing a wall with sheathing. Um, also, you only have to have uh, headers in one of these walls. You don't have them in both. So framing the exterior wall, that extra exterior wall is, is not really uh, a huge added expense. Uh, and typically here we're paying about uh, $7.50, $9 a lineal foot extra for that uh, two by four wall. So we got roughly 200 lineal feet of house here and we got two floors. So 400 lineal feet at that math, uh, what is that? So it's 3000 bucks roughly and it's $1.40 a square foot more for this house. Or, no, a dollar forty a square foot. It's three thousand dollars extra. So I'll put that in there. Uh, our framing costs here are right around the twelve dollars a square foot, fourteen dollars a square foot ish in Calgary, Alberta here. So a dollar forty extra and you've got an extremely cost effective insulation going in and extremely cost effective materials, which is just two by fours. Honestly, it makes this wall assembly extremely cost effective and easy to build. I love talking about cost effectiveness when it comes to these high performance homes. This is honestly what I base a lot of my uh, um, assemblies on is cost effectiveness. It, it's, it's honestly the holy grail to getting everyone to adopt into high performance home building here. The wall assembly is just one small piece to the puzzle of cost effectiveness for net zero home building. So we have another video out there that talks strictly on just the numbers that went into building this net zero home. And I urge everyone to go and check that video out. It'll tell you as much as you want to know. Uh, and I'd love to hear your comments on it. I see I ever find a T-stud guy. You know what? I think they're a great product, but I don't think the cost effectiveness of these T-studs or H-joys is going to beat out doing a double studded wall assembly. Uh, now, the T-studs and H-joys, they're not extremely common. So I can't just go down to Home Depot or Rona when I'm short 10 studs and just quickly pick up a few and bring them out to site. If I'm short, I gotta order a specialty product. The products we're using here, like I said, I can just go down to any hardware store and buy and pick up. Uh, we're looking for that high constructability, high cost effectiveness. So although I don't know what the actual cost of the T-studs or H-joys are, I would bet that they're not gonna be as cost effective as a double studded two by four wall. Okay, square footage. Okay, so obviously one con of a high performance home is that your wall assembly is gonna be a little bit thicker than a conventional wall assembly and fair comment for sure. But I would urge people to really think about how much you're actually losing here. Our wall assembly here is 11 inches, that's from OSB exterior sheathing to inner drywall. Now, a typical wall in uh, up here in Canada would be a two by six wall. So you would be six and a half inches. 
uh, from drywall to exterior sheathing. So six and a half inches, the difference between that and 11 inch is four and a half inches. So when you look at a room, can you give up four and a half inches of that room? You know, I'll leave that to you guys to answer. And if you can't, that double studded wall assembly, you don't have to give up the three inches. You can go down to two. So now you're only giving up three and a half inches. You can, you can go, you can move the, the double studded wall to accommodate whatever square footage you really want to give up there. Okay, this guy um, is basically saying two by eight is the most efficient. Because with a two by eight, you still have that stud touching the outside and the inside. So we still need to find that complete thermal break. So um, really, I don't know, I don't think you've solved any problems here yet with the two by eight uh, wall assembly. Um, I'll just let that be there. That's it. We good? We need an outro. You need an outro? Yeah. That's it for me and uh, replying to the comments here today. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to put a comment in there. I love reading the comments and seeing what other people are thinking. Uh, there's no right answer here. It's only what works best for you. And uh, I hope you guys have learned something here. Uh, and I look forward to reading your comments on our future videos here and going from there. Anyways, have a good one out there. Stay safe.